Hey, what's up everybody? It's Dave, also known as the Notion Coach, and wanted to do a quick video. I got a bunch of questions on this from an Instagram post on this particular view of actions and how do we create this like super Kanban board where you've got your actions, but they're also subgrouped by project. So I wanted to kind of do like a build from scratch video where we look at how to not only relate these two databases together, but create a view where we could just kind of toggle open and closed specific projects and see all the actions that are associated with that project. So before we jump in, just to kind of get a quick view on what we're trying to build, you, you'll see here that we've got a list of projects, even though if I go to the properties, actually, if I go to the layout and show the database title, we're actually looking at the actions database, but they're organized by project. So this is the goal for how to, how to build this. If I expand this project, I can see all of the actions associated with that project. And that's what we want to build now. And we're going to do it from scratch. All right, let's get into it. So we've got our blank notion page starting from zero. So let's just call this uh, super Kanban board. And we've got the option to make this a table board, you know, use it from a template. We're just going to start from scratch. So if you press enter, we just got a blank page. We'll probably update this bow in a little bit, uh, but we're going to first create two databases. So we need a database for projects. So I'm just gonna make a little space here and a space for actions. And then if we, if we click on forward slash and database, you got the option to choose from one of the six views. We're going to use the inline, just basic table view because we're gonna create kind of a custom board later on. We're gonna call this projects as well. You got project name, you can leave that as name. And then a tags, we can leave that there. If we're thinking about projects and the things that we wanna track, we could get really granular in terms of assigning priority or assigning specific additional tags that are more pertaining to your work. But for now, let's just add a couple for reference. So. First one I'm gonna add is a date, and we'll call this complete by, so it's kind of like our project deadline. Uh, and we got the date, you can format it, everything looks good there. And another, one more property we're gonna add is status. So I'll make this a select tool, call this status. And from here, let's uh, go back make this full screen. I'm gonna change this bow real quick. All right, let's give it a briefcase. Actually, let's get it one of these. Cool, all right, so let's get rid of this extra property, press delete, and then for status, we're gonna add a few. So let's say um, not started, we can say upcoming, active, and say complete. So eventually we can customize these if you want to add an emoji or a specific color palette. If we just kind of go through here, I like to kind of go from one color to another. So if we go to not started, if we start here as let's say orange and then upcoming, we'll make that yellow. Active, we'll keep green and then complete, we'll make that blue. So we've got statuses for projects, no real projects yet, but we'll say, let's say new blog post new YouTube video and client project. So we've got projects database. Now let's do the same thing for actions. Forward slash a database. I'm gonna make this in line two, call it actions. And here, let's just add a couple more properties. So we'll say, we'll change this to status as well. So, and then I'm going to change this multi-select to select. So we can only pick one status this is going to be helpful for the Kanban board also. And then here we'll do the same thing. We'll just say not started, upcoming, active, done, and kind of use the same color palette. So I'm just going to change these to orange, yellow, green, and change that to blue. And we'll populate these actions in a bit, but we also probably want a 
like a due date. So let's go to date, change this to due date, press enter, and got those properties. All right, so we've got these two databases. A couple things I want to do is first, we're gonna relate these together. So this is gonna allow us to bring in any properties you have from one database, you can show them or filter by them in the other database. So this is kind of like a crucial point to, you know, if you've ever seen like those Notion dashboards where you've got like all these connections or like custom filters, a lot of that re relies on setting up relations between different databases. So we can start to pull in information in kind of custom ways. So we'll start with the projects. So if you've got like a bunch of templates or like a bunch of pages in your Notion, sometimes it might help to kind of like give some symbols so that it's easier to find and search. So if I go to projects and I wanna create, instead of text, we're gonna scroll down to relation. And you'll see here actions shows up at the top, but if it doesn't show up at the top, you know, given those symbols, helps you to um, find that particular database. So we're gonna call that actions. And I like to kind of give a symbol just to, as a visual reminder that it's a, coming from a relation. And if you notice at the, in the actions database, the, there's a new property created that's connected to projects. When we create the first one, that's making that connection and then also allowing you to see it in the other database, which is here. So we'll name this to kind of clean it up, but we'll just call this projects, press enter. And so now these two are connected. So the next thing I wanna do is create a few project templates so that you know, if you were using like an icon library or you've got like a color coding system, using a template just kind of saves time so that you don't have to repeat those customizations for every new project. So let's take a look at that next. And then lastly, uh, we'll take a look at how to build that super Kanban board view. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is in projects, if I click on this drop down button, I'm gonna create a new project template. So this is gonna save us time in terms of if you're categorizing projects or if you just kind of use icons or any, any properties that you're tracking for, we can kind of start to think about them as templates based on the type of project. So if I go to new template, we'll just call this new uh, YouTube video and we'll say this is YouTube, create a new tag. Actions we don't have yet, but we'll leave the due date and status as empty. If you want to, if you know you're starting a new project, maybe we'll put upcoming by default um, and then leave complete by empty. But in the project, we can start to templatize what's in this view and connect that actions database and filter it so that you're only seeing the actions for this particular project and you don't have to kind of recreate this page every time you start a new project. So we're going to click forward slash and then linked database link the view of a database, and then we're going to look for that actions board, just came up first here. So we've got that, and you'll see that it's empty, but we can do a couple things. So for one, I'm gonna change this to a board view. So instead of table, we'll give this board view, and I'm gonna rearrange these so that it's kind of moving from incomplete to complete. So we'll say done is all the way to the right, and then we have not started, active, and then if I with upcoming before active. So we've got this kind of process going from not completed to completed. And one last thing in, because we're in a template, we want to filter. And then when we filter by project, you'll notice that this new YouTube video template page shows up as a project, which is great because filtering to this automatically means that when you create a new project and you use this template, you're already filtering this view. So all you have to do is kind of pre-populate this with tasks that are related to the project. If you want to go uh, one level further, let's go to, let's, you know, add on to this template. We'll say a project actions, and then we can say, drag these into not started as kind of like a reminder to ourselves. And then we'll just kind of make this code as a reference. And then we'll just make a list of things, you know, I'll write script prep notion space and 
edit video as a couple. I'm going to turn these into pages. So we've got this set up and the one last thing we want to add is an icon. So if we go to upload an image, we can kind of choose from a icon library. I'll share the link uh, to the icon library that I use for a lot of these. I wish I could tell you where it came from, but I don't have that information. So if anybody knows where this Notion page was from, please let me know in the comments. But if we go to this folder, I've got it kind of saved to my favorite. Let's just add an icon here so we can say that, you know, in this case, all blue projects are YouTube or video content related and we've got our template. So once we've got that set up, I want to do a couple more things. I'm going to duplicate this and we'll say new writing project, give this a different color. And instead of the tag, instead of uh, YouTube, we'll say writing blog. Add some tags there, always call, also call this upcoming. And then here, instead of these tasks, we'll say outline draft first revision. Turn these into pages. And we've got our writing project template. And then one more, let's say we're gonna create a new client project. And then we'll give this a different color. All right, so we've got three templates. So now that we've got our template set up, we're going to assign each of these project examples a template. So for the blog post, we'll say that's a writing project. And if you notice, once it kind of pre-populates, what I can do is click on these and drag this into not started. And we've got our tasks here. You can see that in the actions view. And since you're seeing it at the bottom of the page, we can just go ahead and hide this so that you're kind of cleaning up the project view a little bit more. Let's do the same thing for these two. So for the YouTube video, we'll give this the video template. Same thing, let's drag these into not started. And let's do one more client project is gonna get this template. I don't think we made tasks for that, but that's fine. Actually, let's just kind of use those as an example. So we've got three projects, we've got some actions connected to those projects. And now if you go down to the actions database, you'll notice we're populating this database with each of these actions and then the associated project. So we've got these two, but we wanna kind of pull all this together into this like super Kanban board view. So that's what we're gonna do now. So let's make a page called databases. And that way I can kind of drag these, drag all of this in there and kind of start from scratch. Move that to the bottom. All right, so we're gonna set up our view. So we're going to click forward slash and then again, linked view database. We're going to use the actions database that we set up. And here we're going to hide this don't need that title. And we're gonna change the view type to, if I go into layout and board, we're gonna, this is where we kind of get a few steps into customizing this board. So first we've got the, we're not putting any, making any changes here. We can color the columns just for reference. And we're grouping in this case by status, which we want. However, we do want to make sure that the order is going from not completed to completed. So we can kind of drag some of these back and forth a little bit. So when we go into group, we're going to set this to same way we did in the project view. We're gonna say not started and then upcoming, active, and then done. So we're going from left to right. But if you notice all of these, this is kind of showing up every action for each project not really categorized. So the categorization is what we want to focus on. So if we go one level further into subgroup here, if we look at our options, we now have the option to group by project. 
because we've got that relational database. So if I select project, now what's happening is not only do we have that uh, board view of the status, but we're subgrouping by project. So a few more customizations that we probably wanna make. Here for no project, we can just hide this so that only the projects with active actions show up. And here, if I go into sort manually, I can change the order of these so that, for example, I want this project up here and then the blog post and then the client project last. And if I close this, now I've got group by status, subgroup by project. And if we kind of went, you know, a little bit more granular with only showing projects that were active, let's make that quick customization here just to see what that looks like. So I'm going to go to the bottom and we go back to databases. And then in projects, we're going to, we've got statuses. So we're going to set all of these. Let's set only the first two to active and the client project to upcoming. So that we've got that up to date. So I'm going to create a new rollup. So when we relate to databases, you also get the option to roll up information from that other database. So what does that look like? If I create a new property here and I change this from text to rollup, now I have an option that says, I'm creating, I'm creating the role from projects, which is the only relate, related database. And here I'm bringing in specifically the status. So I'm bringing in that information and then I want to show the original tag, whatever that property is in projects. I want to show it here. So I'm going to rename this to project status so that I know exactly what this is and don't confuse it with the action status. And Got that, it's not really useful in this view, but let's go back to that uh, previous view to see how we can use that. If I create a filter, let's say I wanna see only the projects that are active and so that I don't have this super board that has every project I've ever worked on and then I have to manually reorganize it. We don't wanna do that. We wanna kind of filter it. So I'm going to filter by project status. This is that new rollup that we created and I wanna see only projects that are active. And let's set that up. Let's kind of minimize that filter view. And then one last thing we wanna do is in the subgroup, I want to hide empty groups, which is essentially saying we can only see the projects that are active. So if we did that, if you notice the client project moved to the hidden group and now we've got only these two active projects so that this becomes, it could become a dashboard for all of the active projects that we have uh, ongoing and we can kind of quickly update create new tasks and manage these projects all in one place so that's just a quick view of the super kanban board i had several questions about this so hopefully this helps us to start building these and really encourage everyone to explore relational databases and think through where does it make sense or where do we have opportunities to connect these different databases together. And if you haven't really dove into databases yet, whether you're journaling or managing projects, I'd highly recommend just kind of exploring a little bit further because now you get all of these new opportunities to not only connect different groups of information together, but we can start to filter information in exciting ways. We can sort information from information from another database. So really kind of the sky's the limit when we get in all of the opportunities that come up when we relate databases. So hope that was helpful and let me know if you're working on it or if you're trying this out in the comments. And if you want to see, you know, future videos similar to this, definitely subscribe in the, using that button below and see you in the next video.